Hello everyone and welcome. I am thrilled to welcome you to the third edition of our Southeast Asia Zuglidema Day um, and our very first for, you know, virtual one. So uh, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the tool. I'll explain a little bit more about that after the presentations. Um, but before we finally get our Xugula founders on stage to pitch their startup, let me give you a very quick introduction, of course. So Xugula is, um, for those who don't know, Xugula means ex-Google employees. Uh, yes, uh, we are quite creative at Google when it comes to names. Um, Google employees are called Googlers. Uh, for those who watched the uh, movie, The Internship, you might know that uh, newly hired Googlers are called Nooglers, new, new Googlers. Uh, we also have Greglers. Uh, yes, it's for the most mature employees who have gray hair. Uh, we also have Gayglers for our LGBT community and so many more. So we are Googlers, ex-Googlers. Um, so the Zugler community was founded five years ago by Chris Fong, who I believe is here today, so you will be able to speak with him too. Um, it was started from, uh, from the US, um, and since then it has expanded quite significantly uh, with a chapter in a lot of different countries, including Singapore and Southeast Asia. Um, and the objective is pretty much the same. It's to help our Zuglers uh, in their entrepreneurial journey and professional development. So for that, we have a number of different programs. Um, we have some global programs, um, such as the Zugler School, for instance, which uh, recently launched. Um, it actually offers an eight-week course for students all over the world who wish to take a gap semester and learn from seasoned professional. Um, so it actually kicked off this week with a former president of uh, Google Cloud. Um, and we received over 1,000 applications. There are over uh, 200 Zugler mentors. So yeah, long life to Zugler School. Um, we also have a, a, a syndicate um, with uh, more than 1,500 investors. And we've already made uh, 35 investments to date globally. So these are for the global programs. We also have regional programs uh, that we developed. Um, and so one of the programs, I'm not going to detail all of them, uh, but one of the program is the Southeast Asia Xuglu Demo Day. So every year we curate a bunch of uh, Xuglu funded, um, founded uh, startups. Uh, we prepare them and they present to all of you um, in this type of forum. So we've been organizing uh, the Zugla Deva Day in Southeast Asia for three years now. And this year too, we have a very interesting array of uh, Zugla startups in the fields of AI, food tech, ed tech, health tech, and more. So our eight startups presenting today went through um, a 10 week program where we prepared them uh, for this event. Uh, and introduce them to seasoned Xugler mentors. Um, and I would like, therefore, to, um, to take this opportunity to thank our mentors this year, uh, who have been spending great time uh, uh, with our founders and shared uh, sound advice. This event would not be possible without my partners in crime, Kenat, Bjorn and Tarun, who have helped me pull this together and mentor our four startups from the beginning. Thank you very much, guys. Um, just FYI to everyone, uh, like in the past years, this event is again fully volunteer at Forge. We're not doing this part time, we're doing this on our free time. Um, a huge thank you as well to Sequoia and Zublo.co, who have been our partners since the first edition of this event. Thanks to Beck Friends, who is actually a startup uh, which presented last year. Uh, and they, went, uh, they really went the extra mile uh, this year to help us with uh, logistic during this COVID crisis. And finally, thank you very much to Remo, uh, a rising star in this new COVID world. Um, so for those who uh, attended the previous events, um, which happened at the Singapore Google office, we have always believed that such events would only really work uh, well with a good portion of networking in the mix. Um, and 
Remo has made this possible for our first virtual demo day, so thank you. Uh, as you have seen or you will see after the presentation, the platform allows you to network with our startups. Um, and therefore, we can keep the fun side of the event um, without the drinks, though. But uh, well, you can still bring them with you. That's fine. Um, OK. This being said, so of course, uh, like every new technology, um, there might be some issues, can happen, but worry not. Uh, should you have any problem, you can reach out to our tech support team using the link on the top right corner um, of the platform. Uh, we have a dedicated WhatsApp group for the next two hours to help you with technical issues. Um, OK, I think enough of an introduction. Uh, let's get to the core of the event and introduce you to our new Zoogler startups. All right, so let me call the first startup. So the first startup presenting has chosen to tackle a well-needed problem for quite an overlooked population. We see them, we need them, but do we really know what it takes for them to come and work here? Kirtan and Namania from SAMA are modernizing the migrant recruitment process. So without further ado, please welcome our first founder, Kirtan. Over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kirtan, and along with Namania, we're the co-founders of SAMA. Construction recruitment today is broken. Meet Modip. Modip is a Bangladeshi construction worker in Singapore. And in order for him to find his job, he had to pay thousands of dollars in upfront fees to agents and other middlemen. And he's not alone. Workers often have to pay up to 70% of their yearly salary just in fees. Companies also have very little visibility into who they're actually recruiting because of bad data on experience and skill levels. We've spoken to many companies that complain about the lack of information they receive when hiring migrant workers. At Sama, we're building a digital recruiting platform that helps workers find good jobs and pay less fees. We use messaging platforms like WhatsApp and Facebook to quickly onboard workers. Companies also receive an easy to use dashboard where they can input new job requests and keep track of existing ones. We take care of all the paperwork and visa processing, which for the first time enables companies to track the entire recruiting process digitally. This is a huge and overlooked market. Every year, hundreds of thousands of workers go abroad to work in the construction industry alone. This results in billions of dollars in fees paid each year. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're currently focused on helping workers entering or already in Singapore. COVID-19 has had a huge impact on the construction industry and especially migrant workers. We're continuing to work with our users to help them find new jobs and are confident that companies will pick up hiring as borders open back up and work sites resume. Because of the recent events surrounding migrant workers, there is now also an increased awareness of the issues they face when they're trying to find a job. We believe this will lead to more companies looking for an ethical solution like ours that enables them to find good workers with the right skills. We've also begun to add other related services like sending money or paying for goods and services back home. We recently launched two new features that help our users save time, money, and safely get back to work. First, it's a Sama wallet, which enables workers to digitally send salary payments and send money back home instantly with great rates. For instance, Modib can now send money back home right from his smartphone. Second is the Sama health check, which alerts companies of their workers' health status in real time so they can safely resume work. Earlier this year, we secured an employment agency license in Singapore and have now begun placing workers and generating revenue. We offer our clients a transparent pricing model and are receiving more interest every day as work sites resume across Singapore. Nemanja and I have experience building products from small startups to large tech companies. But more importantly, we have a deep personal connection with this space. We both have personal experiences with family members going abroad in search of jobs and know the multiple hurdles they've had to jump through. Ultimately, our mission is to make life easier for migrant workers by building transparent, simple, and helpful products. So how can you help? We'd love any interest to companies that are looking to hire migrant workers today in Singapore. We're also interested in speaking with SaaS platforms that are commonly used in the construction industry. Our next fundraiser is planned for early next year, so please reach out if interested. Thanks for your time and attention.
Thank you, Sama. Coming up next, in the transforming space of education is a real-time big data platform for personalized learning that helps teachers and school leaders both across the world radically accelerate student progress, whether in the classroom or remotely. Please welcome ex Google Charles, co-founder at Wish. Hello, everyone. Yes, um, and welcome. Hopefully, you can see my screen. Um, let me know if you can't. So, my name is Charles Wiles, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Zish. Um, and engage, understand, and accelerate student learning with a real-time data platform that makes it easy for teachers to personalize learning in real and remote classrooms. Now, 617 million children around the world are not achieving minimum levels of proficiency in reading and mathematics. It's shocking, that's nearly two thirds of the world's children. And our mission is to ensure that every student in the world has access to the best learning resources and applications to fulfill their potential. Our goal is to build a billion dollar company serving hundreds of millions of students. So here's the problem we address. Teachers and school leaders have a similar problem. Teachers teach 300 students every week, typically. How do they find the time to understand each student's individual learning needs? And even if they could, how do they find the time to personalize their teaching to each and every student? And school leaders have hundreds of classes and teachers in their school. How do they find the time to understand each class? And how do they find the time to give each teacher and class the personal help they need? Well, we solve this with two incredible products, Quizalize for Teachers and Zish Insights for School Leaders. Quizalize lets teachers engage students with a fun classroom quiz game. It allows them to get instant mastery data to understand each student's learning gaps, it allows them to automatically personalize follow on resources so that students progress fastest. Zish Insights for School Leaders aggregates all that data on a daily basis to give school leaders daily insight into the progress of every single class. And that allows them to take much earlier targeted action to address any emerging issues that are there. Now, Zish Insights is a unique and special product giving daily insight to school leaders. But Quizlize is a really special product too. It is the only product in the market that allows teachers to engage, understand and accelerate student learning. We have some amazing traction impact. More than 140 million questions have been answered by students on our platform. Our net promoter score is consistently above 75. And we, our software works. We are improving learning with state standardized test scores showing an 8 to 10% improvement in middle school science in Texas. And we've growing tremendously fast in the last year with a six times increase in daily teacher signups, reaching a thousand a day now um, across the world. Now we are a freemium product with four revenue streams. In the short term, we're focused on teacher and team direct subscriptions and scaling up our business through partnerships. Our first partnership with Oxford University Press is due to launch at the end of this month. And we're looking for more partners who want to take our products to market in their local markets on their own brand across the world. But in the midterm, we're very focused on tackling the lucrative markets of the US school and district markets, where we've already sold to 50 schools and districts there, and to local and national governments. And our first deal in the Philippines is closing this month. Now, the total addressable market for our product, we believe, is around $11 billion. And we're particularly keen to expand in other Southeast Asian markets like Thailand, Vietnam, and Malaysia. Now, I have, a, I have a PhD in AI from Oxford University and an MBA from London Business School. I was actually Google's first product manager hired outside the United States. Daisy, my co-founder, is an exceptional commercial lead who's been at various high growth startups, including Eventbrite, and she co-founded her own digital music startup before this. And Bly and our CTO has been working with me for the last 10 years. Our previous company focused on using big data and analytics for personalized advertising in the ad tech industry. And we have four amazing teachers on the team from the UK, US, Singapore and Philippines. 
Now we have a um, current investment opportunity and we are looking for funds, um, particularly in Southeast Asia to help us scale up there uh, with $500,000 in our $1.2 million round still available. But we're also super keen for any of the people here to help connect us with partners in local markets in Southeast Asia who would like to take our product to market on their own brand and with their own content. We'd love to talk to you afterwards. Please feel free to come and talk to us at our booth. I'll be on floor one and Daisy on floor two. Or feel free just to email us at charles at zish.com or daisy at zish.com. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Charles. Vicky is building a business in the travel and hospitality space, which has, despite COVID, managed to grow very well the last few months. Vic, big welcome on stage. Okay, thanks everyone. Vic, founder and CEO from Hello. Uh, we doing an, the we are two years old star. We doing a natural language understanding conversational SaaS platform for the service industry. What is the service industry we are mentioned here is actually covering about hospitality, property management, and the real estate operation. So why we need a the natural language understanding for the, the, the industry? Because the industry is always labor intensive. So how we can help them to do and the optimal efficiency and the reduce the content and also helping them to build in the robotic process automation system. Uh, we think that the building and the SaaS platform for them will be in the specific technology and the service they can use other than just taking any consumer product or taking them the, like the internet giant like Google, Amazon, which will not really be able to working so deep on their, on their system. So in the past five years, since Google and Amazon push out for the Google for the voice assistant, we see a lot of the service apartment property management and the hotel, they start adopting in the early stage voice system. But what the problem with that, because in the, when you want to do the product, you want to do the product is highly relative to your industry, like a service call, like understand your facility, and which has in the more deeper connected with their service other than just a consumer product. But how they can do that, how, how they can do that with a low cost, affordable pricing, and the fast lending. That's the, the we are going after. If we look into the hotel service today, uh, we see the Arco hotels and the CDO mentioned above. So we think all the search through the desktop is dead. So that means that your guests always struggle with the information, no matter from the paper you give or homepage or whatever. And second thing is that can hotel understand their guests because everyone's come from the OTA platform, how they understand their guests. And even the guests stay inside the room, how they know what they are doing. And that when guests go into your room, they stay there for 24 hours. Can you sell anything else other than just BNB service, how about your spa, how about your souvenir inside your hotel? That's something we want to fix. So in the simple world, so we're using our uh, conversational AI framework to combine with the property management, complicated property management system and the simplify in, in the in-room concierge entry and the mobile app entry and the uh, uh, instant message entry or even in the PBS online concierge. So our, our advanced technology, so we build our own natural language understanding platform to understanding the service industry need. And also we create a graphic DB database to understand the service, to learn the data best about the service, which we will be able to outperform to the older product, which is not really tuned for this industry. So our code competition conversational platform has a multiple intention in one conversation. So we'll show you later in multiple language as you have people flying around and the multiple entry and the industry knowledge. So here's a video I want to show. Hello, so Rita. the first thing you see is so-called the multi intention. So you can ask him everything in one sentence. You don't need to ask him one by one. This is very unique technology we have today. And second things other than multi intention, we have a multi language, we have in the Chinese, we have English, we have the Japanese. So, Hello, and the, to support the industry going, usage, going you need a backend portal other than just a consumer interface. So you see, we have a portal to tell hotel or owner what happened here. And also we ha also helping the owner to tune their facility information into our service. 
So they can ask him the Wi-Fi password. They can ask him for the breakfast time. Oh, also, we need to do everything. So we don't need to go to everything one by one. And also, the very unique technology we have here is that you can ask him everything by one sentence. That means we can reduce every single button. Like you got to click five buttons to find what you want. Now you just only the one sentence to find out the result, what you want. So this is a very unique technology we have. And other than this, let's think about how we can understand guests more than text. So, so for example, you see the three hotels information here we have. And then three hotels is actually very close by just 10 minutes walking distance. But in our voice data, we find out that any hotels, they have a very, very different customer request, a different customer intention. So we're helping owner to understand their guests more than just they guess what they want. And uh, as I say, upsell your self service. When they stay in a room, can you do something more? So we connect with the location-based service. Everything's helping them to upsell their service to get a more revenue opportunity. So for right now, we start the company for two years, but we get early traction even during the COVID-19. We have 70 hotels and uh, already working with us. And the 20 hotels and the service department already plug in our service. The hotel including the La Meridian, Haya Intercontinental, Arco, Araf, and the regional five-star hotel. We have 100 pay customers, more than 100 unique pay customers right now, even during the COVID-19, that's very important. And also, most interesting things we find out, our inquiry every day is 10 to 15 times. It's actually 10 times more than consumer product. We have a very, very rich voice data for our guests. So where we are, we, right now we have two years, we have been raising around 3.6 million US dollars, and we will do the next A round in the, in the Q2 next year. Five million target launch in Japan and the Southeast Asia, especially Thailand and Singapore. So we're looking for the business and the investment network. So you will be able to reach out to me in the week at edo.ai. Thanks, it's right time, six minutes. Thank you, Rick. Coming up next is a digital platform that addresses a growing concern in our times, that of mental health. With access to professionals, self-therapy tools, and community, they aim for prevention and cure both. Please welcome ex Gugria Kanika, founder at MindBeer. Hi everyone, I'm Kanika, founder of MindPeers, and we are making mental health qualitative and measurable. Meet Alicia. She's 30 years old, living with a childhood trauma. The digital world with paradox has actually left her lonely, and the 24-7 working mode in office has completely burnt her out. She's been unaware of her symptoms. Her chest pain, she thought, was actually heart attack and thus problems like unawareness of your mental illness symptoms, only one trained mental health professional for every 300,000 patients today who need quality treatment and a lack of an evidence-based treatment makes mental health care questionable. And guess what? She's not alone. There are 200 million people in India right now who need services making mental health care a $1.03 trillion market opportunity. Here is MindPeers. With a perfect combination of deep technology and subject matter experts, we are creating a scalable quality supply of mental health professionals who conduct a standardized treatment using our consistent tools so that our users get a data-led progress outcome an integrated care solution for someone like Alicia with MindPeers will look something like this. Our behavioral algorithms will produce a real-time diagnosis, which in turn will give a recommended treatment plan for her. This treatment plan also measures her heart rate variation so that we can get matrix like stress, scenarios which trigger her panic attacks, and imagine when I'm able to tell her that this is when you're going to get your next panic attack. With the amalgam of technology 
and the human intervention of a qualitative therapist, we will be able to give her an evidence-based treatment. Subsequently, we also create a personalized prevention plan for her so that she does not have to be dependent on therapy for the rest of her life. But Mind Peers becomes her lifetime wellness companion from treatment to prevention. Well, we service, re we service enterprises on a retainer model and consumers on a subscription plan. Within eight months of our launch, we are currently catering 3,500 consumers per month and 14 plus corporate clients, including some of the MNCs like Asian Paints, Mintra, Unilever, etc. We are yielding a 2x revenue growth month on month. For our corporate clients, this entire system manifests on the basis of a science-based EAP model, where the client will get pre-assessment tests and the employees walk through that entire journey of personalized content, of therapies, workshops, and then get a prevention plan for themselves. Well, CHROs, founders, leaders are enjoying our services with an improved attribution rate by 42%, they can finally proudly say that our organization is one of the best employer to work for. Why? Because we do take mental wellness also into account. These are the clients that we are servicing at the moment. I am a serial entrepreneur and I scaled my previous startup to a multi-million dollar business headquartered in Singapore. I'm a former Google and Microsoft and actually mind peers was a result of my personal struggle with anxiety. My chief psychology officer is a former Zomato and our advisors are from Harvard, Ames and Nimhans, which are some of the top mental health institutions in India. We are proudly a 100x VC backed startup. And in this round, we are raising 800,000 USD. Thus, with a perfect recipe of deep technology, subject matter experts, and a terrific execution, which is yielding us 2x growth month on month, MindPeers is all ready to impact 2 million people, making an annual revenue of 6 million USD by 2022. I invite you to join me in this journey of making India and other Southeast Asian countries increase their gross national happiness. If this interests you, Please connect with us. This is my email ID, and we'll be happy to talk to you on our booth later. Thank you. Thank you, Kanika. Coming up next is a mobile platform that's truly green and growing. They help us plant trees and interact with conscious brands, thus creating environmental and social impact both. Please welcome ex-Googler Leo, together with his co-founders, Jules and Godfrey, bringing to us Tree App. Thank you, Kenna. All right, so we are Tree App. An app that allows anyone to plant a tree for free every day in less than a minute. I'm sure you've all seen the latest wildfires in California and the shocking pictures and videos about it. Well, climate change is something everybody needs to act on today more than ever. But we identified two distinct problems. On the user end, well, it is a very scattered market and there is no go-to platform for impact. In fact, 90% of people are willing to change their behavior to fight climate change, but only 3% of them know how. So we wanted to provide an easy solution to do just that. On the business front, well, businesses need to show their commitment. We now live in a belief economy where people buy into brands, not products. Therefore, you know, a lot of brands make efforts, but very much struggle to advertise it. Actually, 73% of marketers believe their organization does not leverage their sustainability efforts enough. So we built TreeUp, the first green platform that plants trees for free. So how does it work? Well, in order to plant a tree, the user will interact with a marketing campaign 
for about a minute. Once completed, the brand featured will sponsor the planting of a tree for that user. So to summarize, TreeApp is connecting three main stakeholders, businesses on one end, users on the other, and NGOs right in the middle. On the B2B side, we'll be rolling out a key feature for TreeApp, a brand marketplace, where brands can promote their products to a targeted audience. On the B2C side, we'll be introducing a subscription model for our users to offset their carbon footprint on a monthly basis. Both of these features have been explicitly requested by a majority of our users and clients, and we're building them as we speak. So this is the future of TreeApp, and the slide very much outlines the next steps for us. We're using the TreePer app to acquire and attract new users. We're helping our users to track their impact to retain them by setting weekly, monthly, and yearly goals. We'll be introducing subscriptions to build on recurring revenue from our users. And we'll be rolling out the marketplace to increase the time spent on the app by our users, as well as offer more services to our business partners. So the global online marketplace market is huge. It's, it's 1.8 trillion pounds. Now, what we want to do is to focus on the European in-app marketplace market, which is worth 200 billion. We aim to get a significant market share of the 13.4 billion European in-app marketplace market, and it is growing at 20% per year. So what have we achieved so far? Well, we launched on the 22nd of April this year, which was Earth Day. And since then, we've been able to gather over 15,000 users fully organically. That means that we haven't spent a dime in marketing. Now, we've been ranked consecutively 11th, 6th, and 2nd hottest app in the UK App Store. And we've been featured app of the day as well a few weeks ago. We've, we achieved on average a 16% click-through rate to our brand partner's website, showing how effective our impressions can be. We already have 30 plus business partners on board and a, a large qualified sales pipeline. So who are we? Well, the three co-founders met at London Business School. Godfroy is leading product at TreeApp, and he used to look after product at Zigloo, where they raised five million pounds in their last round. I myself am leading sales and partnership at TreeApp. I used to lead the business development team at Crowdcube, where we raised over 200 million for businesses last year. Finally, Leo is leading the tech at TreeApp, and he used to work at Google as a data engineer, where he worked on a new Google search product, Pathways. So we came really far without any external investment, and we have big expansion plans. A capital injection of $650,000 will enable us to invest in our team and build a scalable platform for more users. We will split this investment in four main categories, tech, sales, product, and marketing. TreeApp will become the go-to platform for environmental and social impact. For businesses, this means a leading green marketplace. And for users, it is a global app enabling millions to plant trees. Thank you very much. We can provide a full deck and business plan for more information on requests. I'll be uh, on the first floor to answer any of your questions. And Gunfroy and Leo will be on floor two. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you, Jules. The next business we're about to see is called Naima. So Naima is a pl coaching platform which reduces uh, women's health risks. Here to present is Nanda. So Nanda, please welcome on stage. Thank you, Bjorn. Right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nanda, a doctor by qualification and a, a marketing professional by experience. I recently came back to India and came across my cousin sister who had just delivered a baby. She told me about this preventive health coaching program, which helped her achieve natural birth. I researched about it online. But to my surprise, I found that such preventive health coaching programs have been existing for decades across the world in different countries, not only in maternal health, but across women's health. What struck me the most was guilt, because in spite of being a doctor, I did not know about this when my wife was pregnant and later went through women's health issues. 
I thought I could not do it for my wife, but I should do it for my daughter and for billions of daughters like her across the world. It's common sense to think that women are on, uh, understand that women are different physically, physiologically, and emotionally. It is now time to think why are we then giving her just one uh, physical fitness coaching program which focuses only on physical strength. The problem is that the healthcare system lacks women-specific coaching programs. Our solution is to provide one-on-one -on -one health coaching services for women, which includes maternal health, infertility and period problems, and cancer. We started off in the area of maternal health. A product today, Naima, which means new mother, is therefore a mobile-based, AI-driven coaching platform which reduces maternal health risks. Mothers who onboard on our platform are run through a conversational AI-driven health risk evaluation which captures the physical, the physiological, as well as the emotional aspects, such as blood pressure, uh, blood sugar, and more. They are then provided access to certified uh, international coaches for one-to-one -one coaching in the areas of exercises, nutrition, breathing techniques, uh, lactation support, parenting, right from the point of conception to five years post-birth. This is supplemented by lessons and quizzes, which ensure learning retention. We just launched around uh, two months ago and in a period of 60 days have around 5,400 downloads in, around, uh, in an unpaid mode or monthly growth rate of user generated health content, which includes health data and messages. is growing at 140%. Our session time per day is up to around seven minutes. Our net promoter score is at 69 and we have already gathered around 100 and impaneled around 160 coaches. What we are most proud of is that we are probably the only app to be used during labor because of the value and, and the effect of the breathing techniques and uh, exercises during the labor process. The benefits of uh, this coaching has already been clinically proven for in different countries and dif across different research sites and include increase in national birth, increase in emotional health, and much, much more. Together, these lead to reduction in the cost of maternal care for individuals, insurance companies, and corporates. In the area of maternal health, our target uh, segment includes mothers from the age of 22 to 40 who are online globally. These mothers spend on an average of $1.50 uh, on non-medical care, giving us a total addressable market of around $5 billion. We very soon plan to move to infertility and period problems, and in the future, to cancer. Our vision, therefore, is to capture the very large global women's healthcare coaching market. For consumers, we have a subscription model which charges them $1.35 for three months of coaching. For, uh, for corporates, we have a license model uh, which charges uh, uh, per license $200. And if you look at the maternity uh, space in terms of digital uh, service and, and products, you have communities and dog traps across the world. We differentiate ourselves clearly with a focus on one-to-one -one persuasive preventive health coaching with clinically proven benefits. We have other technology uh, modes as well and, as a, as, and an exclusivity with a leading coaching uh, organization. The founding team comprises of Saloni, who brings around five years of experience in technology, such as uh, business intelligence, databases, predictive analytics. She was previously with uh, Ernst Young in New York City. Uh, she's a graduate of Columbia University. I myself, I'm a doctor, have been working in uh, technology for nearly 20 years. Uh, plus years. The first part of my career was into hardcore uh, programming. The second part was into uh, sales of digital health products uh, in India as well as the US. I've been working in different countries such as Pfizer, uh, TCS, uh, Google, uh, Capgemini to name a few. Um, and I'm an alum of uh, Harvard. If you look around, you will now find that there are insurance companies adopting maternity coaching. There are Large employers such as Ernst Young, Accenture, Wipro, WNS, uh, which are adopting maternity coaching to improve return or uh, increase return to work amongst talented women. State insurance prog programs are adopting uh, maternity coaching. We are therefore at the start of a very large, new global digital coaching market. We have already demonstrated segment leading user adoption and scalability. We seek your support in raising. Uh, 300,000 uh, dollars to empower women in physically, physiologically, and emotionally to the next level. Thank you.
everyone. That was Nanda. Thank you. So earlier today, we learned about uh, savings. Now we're going to learn about how we can save our time. Guido, the founder of ATM, is here to tell us how we can be much more productive. Welcome on stage. Thank you very much, Bjorn. So at ATM, we help remote teams build the vital habits that create a culture of trust. With remote work exploding right now due to the COVID crisis, this is now more relevant than ever. Current projections put remote work at 600 to 700% of pre-COVID levels. So that means that a lot of organizations, teams, and individuals will have to adapt to working remotely. Most of the problems have been solved, but one truly still remains. Since we started in April, we talked to 50 remote leaders and overwhelmingly heard that fostering connections and trust is incredibly hard to do remotely. What happens very naturally in an in-office environment at the water cooler or before a meeting, you need to be intentional about when you're remote. Several surveys support what these leaders said. Still, you might be thinking, sounds like a bit of a trivial problem, but these leaders are not wrong to worry. In fact, lack of connection and trust leads to directly impacts the bottom line. It leads to 50% lower productivity and 40% more burnout. Moreover, actively disengaged workers cost employers 300 billion a year in the US alone. So this is the massive problem that organizations are facing. And team leaders, as well as HR professionals, really need to be intentional about creating those social moments. However, they basically experience three practical barriers. The first is finding time, ingraining social moments into the fabric of their organization, building a rhythm. They also have difficulty figuring out what to do. That costs a lot of energy and it puts them on the spot once the activities are there. Lastly, in order to measure effectiveness on a granular level, it's quite difficult. And uh, they need to know, like, where are we going? Are we making progress? The market is really ready for this problem to be solved. Uh, with our alpha, which we launched in April, we already connected 1,500 colleagues. Now with our beta, we're onboarding new teams every week, having onboarded 25 teams to date. Uh, those teams include some of the biggest teams at some of the biggest remote organizations like GitLab and TopTel, but also newly remote organizations like Freeletics. And we're seeing an 87% week two team retention, the core metric that we're currently focusing on. So we create this culture of trust by making it really easy to form habits around connection and vulnerability in your team. We set up reminders for social moments and then engage teams into those activities. With that loop, we build a habit towards a positive team culture. Specifically, we integrate with existing channels like Slack, which we use to help teams um, schedule moments around the meetings that they already do. So if you, for example, have a weekly team meeting, we'll suggest and provide an activity for you that fits that meeting. Those activities we've built to be engaging, which is actually the secret to making it easy for everyone to be present. And that's how they can actually forge true connections. So let's move over to the business side. With our freemium model, we'll get into the door. We'll uh, onboard one team and help them build a habit around building connection. Then using um, a product-led growth strategy, we'll expand to the rest of the organization. Um, and that strategy is actually also really what um, shows that we're the right team to tackle this. Mario, our growth expert, has gained experience at Vodafone, Ring, and Google. He's led growth at two early stage startups, achieving 400% year over year growth. And he has the exact expertise to execute on our bottom up strategy and reach that growth potential we believe is possible here. Yanis, our CTO, has more than nine years of experience in, as a software engineer, both in front end and back end. His expertise is cloud technologies. That means he has the exact expertise to be able to build a scalable product. And we've been able to spin up prototypes incredibly rapidly to learn for next iterations. 
Myself, I've been a head of product at a successful software startup in Berlin, where I launched more than 10 B2B and B2C products. I've also learned to really include distribution into the product itself. Moreover, I've been responsible for developing the culture at the organization while we were scaling from four to 65 employees when I left. Most importantly though, we've all been team leads and we've seen how difficult it can be to create and forge a great team. And that's why we're super passionate to help remote teams work better together. In the first part of our journey, we've um, validated several assumptions around our business model and market. And now we're ready to speed up our rate of integration further and onboard more teams on a weekly basis. We're raising 500K to do that. As Peter Drucker said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And with ATM, after that breakfast, you don't even have to go to the office anymore. We'd love to talk to you. We'll be at the booth for both if you're interested in our product or in investing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gudo. All right, our next and last startup to present um, has taken on the challenge to disrupt the food industry and most specifically to solve the shortage of healthy and sustainable dairy production for all. Please meet Tuttle Shree. Over to you, Fengri. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Feng Ru, and I am the CEO of Turtle Tree Labs. So Turtle Tree Labs, um, we're the first biotech company in the world that is actually able to produce milk using sustainable cell-based methods. We started last year. We're now a global company that is based in Singapore with offices in San Francisco as well. Dairy is one of the largest food segments in market value, even surpassing meat and seafood. It is valued at 716 billion, with a CAGR of 3.4%. We imagine that one day this industry will use turtle tree technology as the primary technology to source raw milk. We envision a future where millions will have access to milk, and as long as you have access to fresh water and electricity, a bioreactor can be dropped into any part of the world to produce milk. We know that cattle farming isn't sustainable and produces 37% of global methane emissions. Plant-based products are great, but they don't have the ability to recreate valuable dairy products like yogurt, butter, and cheese. We need to provide what consumers are used to without harming these animals or the planet. We can harness the power of cell-based technology to create milk that is fresh and free from antibiotics. Being functional means being able to use our milk to make cheese, butter, cream, or yogurt. Being the first mover with this technology, our unique advantage is being here in Singapore. We have access to top talents, best-in-class technology, and great support from the government. This allows us to accelerate and operate in a much more cost-effective way than companies abroad. Combined with our unique positioning as a scalable B2B company, Turtle Tree Technology is truly a disruptor. So how does Turtle Tree Technology work? We start with cells that we can get right from fresh milk. We multiply these cells, then put them in our patented in-house lactation media. The cells will then convert the lactation media into milk. There are several key innovations with our patented method. I'd like to highlight that we have been able to engineer our cells to produce milk of desirable content. For example, if customers require milk of high fat composition, we are able to engineer the cells to upregulate certain genes to produce the composition, reducing their downstream processes. What is really unique about our technology is also the fact that the cells are not consumed in the process unlike cell-based meats. The cells act like a factory that continuously convert our lactation media into milk. If turtle tree disrupts just 5% of the global dairy market, it's the equivalent of saving all the water consumed by Singapore daily. It would also be significant 90 tons of greenhouse gases a day, and we can save land mass the size of 15 Singapore's. 5% of the market feeds 390 million people. Imagine how much impact we can have as our technology becomes the industry standard. So using our licensing and royalty model, we will be working with existing dairy equipment manufacturers on the custom bioreactors and equipment. 
Concurrently, our team will work with dairy producers and consumer brands to co-develop SKUs for end consumers. Like the Intel Insight model, we can envision our logo on every dairy product globally. So here's a brief history of Turtle Tree Labs. We started in January 2019 with several scientists. We filed our provisional patents after we made some breakthroughs. By Q4, we raised funding from major global investors, including Lever VC, Artesian, KBW, and CBT the Capital. We now have six fully functional teams and began customer engagement with dairy brands. Recently, we have also been fortunate to win the biggest sustainability challenge in the world, supported by Tomasic Foundation. With this funding, we will focus heavily on R&D and co-develop SKUs with our industry partners. We've been talking to several potential partners for our pilot plant. Here in Singapore, we're speaking with SMC Foods on having our pilot plant in their new premises. Another potential partner is the largest cheese maker in the world. Turtle Tree Technology will reduce the lactose during the milk production. This allows them to produce the same high quality cheeses without producing excess lactose, which is a byproduct of the industry. This will save our partner money and resources. The regulations around novel food safety are new. However, the Singapore Food Agency is taking the lead originally to help companies like us to accelerate our path to market. In parallel, our team is also working on the FDA process. Learning from successful global companies, our licensing and royalty model allows us to scale quickly and become profitable much faster. Upfront licensing fees allows us to bring in revenue very early on during product code development with our partners. The royalties will have exponential returns as volumes increase. Our executive team consists of myself, my co-founder, Max, and Jen, our CTO, and John, our CIO. The entire team has grown significantly to over 20, many of them top scientists. As pioneers in this tech, we can produce milk from so many mammals like goats, sheep, camels, and so much more. One of the biggest interests we've seen from industry is our work on human milk because it has the potential to transform the entire infant nutrition industry. What is even more interesting is the valuable components inside this milk. Every so often, we come, we come across something so transformative, like Total Tree Labs, that can reshape the future and give us hope for a sustainable world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fengru. And this is a wrap. Thank you to all our startups for presenting. Um, it already feels that we are getting into a better world where our children can learn better with Zish, eat healthier with Total Tree, play in greener environments with the Tree app, and be more mindful and supported as they go through life with uh, Naima and my peers. They will also be able to enjoy the benefits of work flexibility with Apium, a smooth vacation booking experience with ILO, and witness better working conditions for migrant workers around them with SAMA. Thank you guys, great job. All right, thank you very much also to our partners, Sequoia, Sugo.co, Friends, and Remo. Uh, by the way, Remo founder, uh, Hoin is here. Uh, so feel free to meet with him uh, should you want to know more about their business. Um, I also know that they're actively hiring, so please pass on the message for them. Um, this is the end of the presentations, but the, the event is still running for another 45 minutes. So should you want to meet with the founders, go and find them at their booth. Uh, most typically, you will find the presenting co-founders at their booth on the first floor. And each startup also holds a booth on the level two. So go and meet them there, especially if their, their table is busy on the first floor. To join that booth, you just double click on the table. Uh, you can download the brochure as, as well on your right. You can look, click on the logos on the left to find out more. Um, and of course, you can also mingle and network at our, at our cocktail tables to meet uh, fellow investors and friends. Um, we provide the table, but you'll have to get your own drinks, sorry. Um, I hope you had a lovely event. Happy networking, everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. Bye.